It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss out. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss out. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique house. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my dad walk on. Man, hey, man. Hey, this is a day that the Lord has made. I rejoice and be glad in it, man. Exactly. Hey, man. Just a dope platform to be on, man. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to our channel, man. Hey, man. And All if, of our platforms. Yeah, on every streaming platform, right? Yes, sir. Man, hey, man. We got a special guest in here today. You really don't need no introduction, man. This guy right here. Dope. If you if you ever been in trouble, you need to. Who you gonna call? You know what I'm saying. <laughs> this guy right here is the guy to call, man. Mr. David Hudson, what's going on, man? Nothing Attorney much. David Hudson, huh? I appreciate you, man. <laughs> so how long have you been? How long have you been? Uh, you know, practicing law, man. Yeah, since since oh nine. Oh nine. That's right. So man, just um, we. We definitely want to know how long you've been practicing law. No, but we want to go back. I want to go back. You to, always want to go back. I always want to go back, way back. <laughs> she when, to know you when, were, you, when you were stealing uh, 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 snack cakes like me out to Bubba Lane's store. Shout out to Bubba Lane. You know <laughs> we want to know about you. Bring in everything. So where are you from? Okay. Um, how were you raised? Controversies you went through when you were younger? All of that. Let's go ahead and tell us a spill. Absolutely. So my mom and my dad are from Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. Man, they racist down there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we actually go down there. We've interviewed down there. Dope, 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 man. I uh, love it. Yeah. Okay. And um, I was, but I was raised in Texas. Okay. Uh, in Waco. Okay. Oh. So the mom yeah. and dad Waco. moved out here. Yeah. Uh, so what ends up happening? My old man was a basketball coach in college. Mm-hmm. So he ended up going from Ole Miss first to Houston. Mm-hmm. He worked at Rice. Okay. So we lived there first. Then he went back. We went back to Alabama. And then we moved back to Waco. He worked at Baylor. Mm-hmm. And so I was in the second grade. Okay. And so we was there ever since. Wow. That's so Waco, cool. man. Wacko, Waco, whatever. You know, it's been a lot of David Caress. Crazy play, things happened down there. The bikers. I remember the bikers had the issue down there. That's right. It's, I think some stuff blew up down there, too. It, it, it gets crazy in Waco. It does. It does. Well, what so, was it like growing up out there? Uh, so it's it's kind of interesting though. So it ends up happening when we first moved to Waco. Um, I, I'm the youngest of six. Okay. I have five older sisters. I'm the only boy, right? Okay. So, Baby boy. Right. <laughs> so it ends up happening um, when we first moved there. I went to a school called Midway. Okay. Midway would be the equivalent of probably Allen, okay. Frisco, something Rich like area. that suburb, right? Mm-hmm. So that was my introduction into you know elementary school and going on. Well. My parents, they split, mm. right? So my oldest How sister- How old were you when that happened? I was in, about to go from elementary to the junior high. Okay. Right? So they split. Life changes, right? Um, so my oldest sister, she lived in the city across the tracks. And so I told my mom, I was like, man, this, and this is back, it looks different now. Back in those days, you may have been one of three to five blacks in the school. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then, you know, on the other side of the tracks with my sister, that's where it was happening. Mm-hmm. Whatever. So I told my mom, I was like, I don't want to go to school no more. And she was like, my mom green as they come. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> she yeah, like, she ain't know what was going on. Right. Well, what do you mean, blah, blah, blah. So I'm knowing, like, I'm seeing socially this this ain't it. No. I need to go be around some old people that look more, more like me. You, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So then I used my sister's address and went to that school. And then that's pretty much that transition is kind of what led me to the path to to be talking to you today. Wow. In this position. But how was it like? How did it affect you when your mom and dad broke up? Uh, it somewhat just cause my old man was always on the road mm-hmm. anyway because he was recruiting so and it stuff didn't like feel that. Like it. So as far as him physically not being there, you know, what I'm saying nothing really changed or whatever. But then in certain times, just having that. That male, because all my uncles and stuff, mind you, in Alabama. Mm-hmm. So I'm talking to him on the phone, but it's different when you get you can just sit there and touch somebody. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? So basically, I just had to navigate the waters myself and take on responsibilities at a, you know what I'm saying, at an early age and just figure it out. But your father still played part in your life, although they were broken up. To to a certain extent. You know what I mean? I, um, it definitely was a difference, and I'm, I'm being kind of 
I don't want to just blast him. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I res- I respect him as a man, but I know him as my as my dad. So it's right. a difference. You understand what I'm saying? So in this life we live, you have different roles. To whereas you can be a good husband and a, a horrible father, and vice versa, or you can be great at both. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? But when you get older, you realize that parents are humans as well, right, or whatever. Right, Especially when you. Get older and yeah, because when you're a kid, you look at them as a superhero. That's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. but but let me just stop y'all for a minute. <laughs> you know, there is no perfect father, and there's no book or guidance to being a father. There is so a perfect the, father. You know, the, God, of course. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. But I'm just saying, you know, every time, even me being a father and having children now, it's trial and error. We're trying to understand how to do the certain things. Now, I might think I'm doing a great job, but then you hear, hey, man, I didn't like this part. So it's a gray area to being a father that a lot of times, especially people that look like us, go through trying to get this understood. And then when you start looking and tapping back into the things that happened to us as far as mentally beforehand with their fathers oh, well, and their you fathers, were fathers when you, were younger. you start to see why the, 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 the these, old, these obstacles obstacles are happening. Right. You start to see these different things, these generational curses cycling you know, through. So uh, I think a lot of time it's all a lot of not just blacks either. There's all type of issues when it comes to testosterone between two men. It's real. Am I right? Absolutely. A thousand percent. So that's the whole game. I think a lot of time because everybody that's sitting in that seat, uh, the number, the number is very low when it comes to the percentage of I had a great life with my father. That ain't happening in that seat. Mm-hmm. So that tells me that th- that this is something that is the devil is playing with our people with as well. Right. You see what I'm saying? So right. that, but, but then it helps us in the long run because it's, it makes us strive a lot of times to do better. Uh, a lot of times because of the things we face as children, trying to understand uh, what was going on with that man that's supposed to be our dad. Right. And if not real, <laughs> like real what talk. the hell yeah. was going on with that man real that's talk. supposed to have been my dad when Things were happening in my life, and I needed him, and he wasn't there for me. A lot of times, we you know don't I mean? we don't understand until we get we older. We go in over here. We be we, tripping. That's <laughs> not real. That's real. That's until real. we get older, and we put that same hat on, and then we then realize, you start to understand. You start right. to realize. Do you have any children, right. or you don't right. have any? Right, one, one. So you right. start to understand. Dang, it ain't as easy as it looked. But it, not only that, once you start to research and realize how your father grew up, because everybody's cases is a little bit different sometimes. Mm. Sometimes you realize how he grew up, and a lot of times people overcompensate for what they didn't have. Exactly. So, like, maybe he grew up where he didn't have money. Mm-hmm. So he makes sure to work his butt off to provide for you, although he didn't provide um, emotional support because he was not there. Mm-hmm. He was not there for you, but in his mind, he's like he's doing what he's supposed to do as a father because he's providing financially. Mm-hmm. And a lot of men tend to do that. Like my role as a father, and a lot of men do this, is to go out here and be the breadwinner, make sure that you have a roof over your head, anything that you want, you can get. Da da da. da. But you don't realize that in life, and this is this goes across the board for everybody. We have to learn how to balance. Mm-hmm. We tend to do one thing so much because that's what we think that we're supposed to do that we're like, okay, how can we balance spending time with you but still going out here and getting the bread because I can't have spend all the time with you because you ain't going to have a roof over your head. That's right. You know what I mean? I got to be able to balance both to be able to, and that's life period. Work-life balance is something in itself. Mm. You know what I mean? Facts. <laughs> it's it's something. It's a big deal. But yeah. Let's get let's get on to you, Dave, mm-hmm. man. Let's let's talk about it, man. Let's get into the fact of how, you know, how were you able to beat these odds? How were you able to push through? You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. And is that what you wanted to do as a child growing up? So it's an interesting story. So get ready. Go ahead. I got, so I'm gonna fast forward though into when I was in high school. Okay. okay. So boom, I end up going, you know, staying in that school district or whatever. Um, 15, 16, 17 years old. I'm off the ports, all the way in. You for whatever. Whatever. Mm. whatever. I'm down for whatever. Chasing the money and whatever comes with it. Whatever come okay. with it. Exactly. So, boom. But just being naive as a youngster, I know, I thought you had to do something to go to jail. Okay. Because that's what you talk. You think, you think that, right? Right. But that is not the case. Absolutely not. So, boom. I'm like, well, shoot, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, you know, I'm live. I know how to do this. I'm blah, blah, blah. Exactly. So me and one of my best friends who just got out of prison, he did 23 on the 40. Wow. So I'm, I'm 16 at the time. He's 17. We get charged with attempted capital murder on a police officer. What? Facts. 
In high school. In, in high school. Facts. So that's when, I mean, clearly I'm here talking to you today, so you know it had to end up a certain way, but it was bogus. Like, straight up, they was Same. lying. If we would have had cameras back then, because back then we just had pages, mm -hmm. but we had cameras back then, this would have been all over, you understand, the news. Yeah. And so my my partner, long story short, he ended up getting um, Keep going. He ended up getting shot by the police. Um, we ended up going to jail, and they first charged us initially with um, attempted capital on the police officer. Um, I don't even have a gun. Really? So I don't know how you can try to kill somebody, much less a police officer, and you don't have no type of weapon or whatever. Did, did the other guy have a gun? He did have a gun. Did he shoot at the police? No. And I'm not just saying, like, how me and you talking, I'm that. I'm seeing the whole, the whole thing. And he went to trial. Twelve people convicted him of something that did not happen. I'm there. You understand what I'm saying? So now I'm like, you there just to watch? Cause you a witness, a witness. First one on the stand. Yeah, and it, you trying to tell but them? They they, they right. charge both of you with that, right? right? So exactly initially, and okay. then my charge ended up getting dropped, dropped. to evading. Okay. Back then, evading was a misdemeanor. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So you pay a little money, get out of jail, and you're good. And I'm good. Little bull crap deferred. And I'm back at it or whatever. So when that happened to him and he goes down, he gets a 40. We 18. Is that what he just got out of? Just, wow. Mm -mm. Yeah, just got a couple years ago. And you see, you don't have a lot of evidence back there. So you can't you can't even say um, nobody pick up his case and say try to get him off. Like on some appeal or something right. like that. He exhausted his appeals while he was in, you know, in TDC. But. It's hard to turn so over. How many appeal. appeals can you get? You know what I mean. So yeah. you, how many appeals you get are you allowed? Two more, three. You get right. three, and then you can go to the Supreme, Supreme Court of the United Court. States. That's oh, okay. right. But by the time they hear your case, you probably on parole because yeah, it takes long. Out. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when that happened to him or whatnot, I'm like, hold on. Like how? How you go to jail for that? And you ain't did. You didn't do that or whatever. Mm -hmm. So now, boom, it's gonna happen again or whatever. So. Now I'm okay. To that this, that won't happen again to nobody on my watch. Wow! So and, and you bam. basically went to school for it because of what happened in your life. That's right. So when that happened, and you said, "Okay, I'm gonna go to school for that." How? Um, what avenue did you take? As anybody thinking about, I'm going to school for a lawyer. Like, oh, that's expensive. Mm -hmm. That takes a long time. You know, how hard was it for you to do that? Not not school was kind of it was kind of easy. It's just reading and memory. To be honest with you. App, math is application, you know what I mean? But outside of that, it's just it's reading and memory. It never, it, that was always easy to me or whatever. So, um, and, I, and I hooped in high school, and I was fortunate enough to go to play in college or whatever. So that took care of undergrad. So you already, oh, okay. you, was he playing basketball with you and everything back then? No, nah, he, he played football at the time. Okay. But by the time we got jammed up. What grade was y'all in? Uh, 12th grade. 12th grade. Yeah. By the time he got jammed, he was already... He wouldn't. They weren't playing no more. Nah, he you know trying to get to that. Get to that. Get to that. <laughs> That's right. That's you right. keep in contact with him to this day. Matter of fact, I'm about to meet him when I leave y'all. He up here in uh, Dallas. It, it was he, he. He from. He from Waco. Waco, but he came up to Dallas mm -hmm. today. Um, how was it during the time he was locked up? You guys, I'm pretty sure you try to keep money on his books and try to look Did out that. for him because you knew that this guy was innocent. Pell Grant is going to some going to my partner, right? And that's why, like, I know. I'm in school, mind you. So when I tell these youngsters that I represent, man, look out for your partner, man. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's not even about the money. It's a drug. They want to know what's going on out here. Send them a couple of pictures. Mm. You That's understand it. what I'm saying? My partner did 23. Yeah, I write 40. people now. I, well, I, I'll write. I'll pick up a pen and write in a minute. Absolutely. Because I know already that it means something to them. Absolutely. Yeah. But a curious part to, to, to him, the first thing that came out of my mind is how angry he is at the justice system, how angry he was, how long did it take him to get over it? Did he ever get over it? I'm a, now I'm bringing him on the show. Absolutely. He, for sure. I got to get him on here. Now mm -hmm. he's, um, he, he started, he joined, uh, he's a Muslim now mm -hmm. or whatever. So his outlook is a lot different. Um, this, you know, the maturation process. So when I was writing him, I was like, man, what's happening? You know, why'd you join this? And he told him, he said, man, it was all type of gangs and TDC or whatever he said, but the Muslims was the only one that I saw doing stuff to keep their people out of jail. Yeah, yeah. as opposed to taking care of them when they was in jail. In jail. Mm -hmm. And so, and he's a you know he's an intellect, he's a thinker. So, boom, 
So when he got out, name changed. He got his beard. Yeah, he he, he went that mother. exactly. But I mean, he told me the first probably ten fifteen years he didn't think he was getting out, so he was wired up. You know what I'm saying? A lot trying to make it through. Exactly. And then telling people, you you hear people say, hey, man, I didn't do nothing to be down here. They, they lied on me. And everybody, like, nigga, everybody in here say the same. Yeah, that's it's what I was very saying. hard, man, because nobody believes you. That's right. So that guy had to go through it, man. You know, and I know it's a lot more of him in there. That ain't, he ain't the only one. It's yeah. a lot of them, bro. That's right. Blacks have been targeted. Like the boy Six said, Lil Six, shout out Lil Six. He said, man, when I come to Texas, I'm being haunted, man. He said, I can go out here to LA and have Benzes and Bentleys and be able out with hundreds and thousands of gang members and feel safe. But when I come home to Texas, I feel like I'm being haunted. That's real. You believe that dude they told me? They profile Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Think he said they're looking in the car, they, they arrested him. He said he didn't even, they didn't even give him no, pro, no why. They just let him go and didn't even tell him nothing. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm, when I'm not coming from court, because that suit and ties is a uniform. Yeah. This is how I dress. Yeah. I didn't have to get at them, but I talk cash, noise, because I know y'all can't fool with me. <laughs> so, okay. so come on with it. That's another question I want to ask, because I know that um, a lot of it is ignorance, the way how a lot of people, like when they get stopped by the police and stuff like that, of how to act and so forth. But I know some people who say, well, I know the law, so whenever they stop me, I'll say my rights, I'll say this, I'll say that. But how much does that help you knowing the law? Because then if they wanted to treat you a certain way, they're going to treat you a certain way regardless of you knowing what you know or not. Is right. that true or not? That is true. The best the best weapon that you have now is his phone. Press record, put that mess up there. And, you know, let the tips fall where they fall. Because we'll get to it later on. But, like, because I also worked on the Craig Watkins on down. Oh, like, yeah? Mm. Yeah, so... And I, that was that was we'll, we'll yeah, get to Craig, that. Yeah, Craig Watkins, he did a lot getting people out of prison. You were helping him with that? Man, it was it was a a great time to be a prosecutor mm. under Craig Watkins. Wow, I like, bet it was because he he was something else, man. I used to I seen those guys he got out. I think that's what pretty much kind of pushed him into a a, a corner too in, in his career right now. Yeah, in my side, I'm yeah. I'm on the outside looking in, right. but you can tell they kind of. They didn't like that. Right. They didn't like the way he moved. It's things. politics. Right. Everything is politics. Absolutely. Yeah. So when when you when you decided to go to school, you say you stayed focused. You made it through. Mm -hmm. um, what were some of the things that you thought about as you was going through the process? Well, so I didn't get the real college experience until I went to law school. And what I mean by that, you know, when you play basketball, you uh, it's like a you have like a secretary inside. They say, okay, this is your degree plan. You getting in all your classes. It's not you don't wait list. What you know? You, they I mean, love you. Yeah, yeah. Like it's done Yeah, exactly. So after that, when I'm going to law school, ain't no secretary. <laughs> I'm like, I gotta wake up in the morning and wait in line and woo woo woo. I just can't. Mm -hmm. And the class is full. What mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, wake up call. It, what for real? Wake up call. So, which was good. You know what I mean? You needed that exactly. So going through that, um, having to grow up, I'm uh, my uncle. I have an uncle that really just looks out for me um, in Birmingham, uh, Rod Bailey. So shout out to him. Shout out Rod Bailey. So he uh, he held me down, and then of course I'm a mama's boy. So we grinded and, and got through it or whatever. It so was, how long, how many years did it take you to get everything? Three. three. Oh, three. combined. Whole thing, yeah. So four years of undergrad and then three years of law school. Cool. Yeah, because I, I always heard it take about seven, and, six, seven years. But you did it in the right right amount of time. Right. When you came out, what was the, what, what, and I know you can't talk Hold about on. everything. Before oh, no. you get into that section, I want to say, what um, misconception did you have about law what, before you got in? Like, you know, people think, oh, yeah, I'm going to law school. I can do this. I can do that. Da, da, da. But once you started learning about law, mm -hmm. what blew your mind? So getting into law school, you have this, um, it's a test that you take, right? Mm -hmm. It's called the LSAT. Mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with law school. Nothing. It's just really? a weed not process. Like it's nothing. Oh. Like they trying to t like test your, your logic. Intellect. Bull crap. You understand what I'm saying? It's just a way to keep people out. It's, I'm just being 100 with you. Really? Yes. So bam. how did you beat it? So you you you, you just studied. You just passed. So yeah. So you you <laughs> wired up to think, oh, because I got to do this and blah 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 to get into this good school. Yada yada yada. Then once you get to school, it has nothing to do. You feel like you've been duped. Like, man, I had to go through all this for this? Wow. This ain't, ain't got nothing to do. Okay, boom. 
So you get into law school, and it's a, it's a, it's like the best of the cream of the crop is there, right? Mm-hmm. And so everybody is used to being that dude in school or that lady in school or whatever. So now you got all these quote unquote those people competing. So law school is scaled. So you can let's say if you have a hundred people in a section, they only issue out a certain amount of A's, right? A certain amount of B's, a certain amount of C's. Some are paid for. So the average <laughs> grades are going to be come from the C because it's you're the, you're average in a bunch of above average. You mm-hmm, understand what I'm mm-hmm, saying? Mm-hmm. But you ain't thinking about that. You like a B. You may never be in my life. What's happening? But it's not that your paper was bad. It's just that we only have six A's we can give out. Wow. That's crazy. So that's Even if you know. scored all of it, they just allow six A's. Like it's a, I'm just using that as a, you know, wow. as an arbitrary number. But right. yeah, like literally, like depending on, let's say if it's X amount of students in this section. Yeah. Okay, we got 10 A's to give out. They pick and choose. Okay, let well, me go. this is third generation lawyers. So let me make sure I give it to yeah, them. Because let, me, let, me, let me go back. I want to go backwards a little bit. I want to talk about the, the, the officer that all this supposed had happened to. Yeah. I want to talk about where he had, what happened to him later on. Did you ever run back into him? Because at the end of the day, you in Waco and it's not that big of a town. So Mm -hmm. I'm just, I I just know because I can, from experience, tell you going through a situation, coming back, sitting in a car, looking at the guy that had did certain things to me. So just, I understand that because I've been riding down the road and look over and say, man, that's, I ain't going to say his name. Like, what the heck? Yeah, you know. So how did that? Ha- how did I know you ran into those scenarios? How, what what was that? up with that? Okay, so boom, fast forward, right? School was over with all that type of stuff. So it was it was probably give or take, I'm gonna say at least ten officers, because by the time we got out the car, they had us surrounded. So we take off, they lit it up or whatever. They shot it. Oh God, yeah, my partner got shot three times. The one mm-hmm. that went to prison. Yeah, he has oh. lead in him today. If he walked through a metal detector, it's gonna go out. Wow. I thought they had downed him because when they pulled him and from behind the And you didn't get bush, hit. Thank God. Yeah. God had you covered Yeah. for a bigger plan. So let's Real talk time. about these law the officers. They did, this was a cover up. And job. you knew all 10. I, did, I didn't like, know them. know their faces, like. Five of them I know. Okay. I couldn't forget them. Okay. I you bet you could what, I, I can, can what made those ones? five stand out from the others? Uh, anger. I was. That's how hot I was. Because okay. at the end of the day, y- y'all are lying, mm-hmm. and you know you lying, and I can't prove this, but I believe that the prosecutor know that it's some fugazi stuff going on. Okay. And the reason I say that because before my partner went to trial, they came with him with a plea offer of ten. Who gets a dime on attempted capital murder on the police officer right, in that, Texas? Yeah, that don't. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I feel as if though they knew, if he beats trial or we dismiss this case. He's suing us because he got shot wrongfully. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So now, like you were saying, the political pressures, and you know, but at the same time, it's like, what's your moral compass? I, you can get another job, Mr. Prosecutor, but this is affecting people's lives. And like how they tried to come at me, um, like I said, I'm a juvenile at the time, and I'm not even knowing what I'm doing when it's happening. You understand what I'm saying? It's just, I ride with my partner. You understand what I'm saying? So they came at me and was like, hey, um, so you said this, this, and this. I'm like, no, I didn't. I didn't say that. Because it, it, it was three of us, right? So I'm like, no, nah, I didn't say that. Well, yes, you did, and blah, 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 blah. So this one, this, the first assistant, he takes me into the head prosecutor's office at the time. And they got me cornered in. And they're like, you said this, and you're going to say this, and blah, blah. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know what y'all talking about. Son, do you know what perjury is? This is, what, this is how you coming at me. I don't know what it is. So, you, you know, this is what it is. And you lie. I said, man, listen, I'm not, we're not after you. We're after him and all this type of stuff. So I said, listen, if it's going to be some lying, it's going to be some lying to help my partner get out of jail. Do what you got to do. If I got to run and go to jail, hurry up and let's run it so I can go on and get back and handle my business. Because at the end of the day, I don't know too many great people that haven't had to go to jail. You knew this at that age? Yeah. And wow. you told him that? Straight up. And okay. so now, but at the particular time, I got braids down my back. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it. Yeah. So, they looking at it like, who is this? Okay. You know, so then when they know I wasn't budging, they, then they come back and say, oh, we apologize. We got you mixed up with the other person who 
was in the then car with y'all or whatever. Like I don't know who y'all. I just know y'all got me Did he mixed get up. Period. Too? Nah, he just got a, he got the same oh, okay. uh, evading charge, or whatever. Did he get did did. Did he sign or did he do anything towards him? No, nah, he, he wouldn't know. He didn't do he no, no funny business. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And it was what I was saying. Like, I'm not knowing I'm being solid. Mm -hmm. I just know I'm not about to help you. Not This ain't about to happen. And if I got to go to jail with my partner on some stuff I didn't do, it's, just, it's destiny. Because there's a lot of people who went to jail that didn't deserve to go right. to jail. That's who, so who am I? That's right. You understand what I'm saying? So, but... Yeah, everything worked out. Your mama must out. have been freaking out at this Ooh. time. Yes, she was. Mm -mm -mm. She wasn't trying to hear it. And I, this is why I know Made prayer. Made her stronger. Prayer is real. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's been many times, it's like not knowing the law at the particular time. It's been many nights I rode around with a life sentence in the trunk, didn't even know it. Yeah, yeah, You understand yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. And it's just, it wasn't, that wasn't the path. And so mm -hmm. I know some, it's had some beef, some people that was looking over me. You understand what I'm oh, saying? Yes. But you know what I always say about life? You still had to be in those places and know those things to be able to touch the people you're touching today. Because if you didn't understand it, because there's a lot of lawyers who've never been in the life that you Absolutely. had that can't defend somebody. They just defend it because of their job, but don't know. But I want to make sure right. we talk. So you've seen some of those guys afterwards? and Yeah. So um, I ran into one at a, um, I think it was at a Whataburger or something, right? He knew you. Nah, he ain't know no. me because it's years in the past. Yeah, you, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? I'm, I'm looking different. Shaved up and all. <laughs> right. But I know him. Yeah. Now, mind you, a lot of these officers end up getting fired for, Other st crazy for stealing stuff. time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they already was liars. I knew this. So anyway, long story short, I'm up in uh, Waterbury and he comes in and he wasn't even in his uniform. I just, I just remember. You know him because right. you remember what they done. So he's like, hey, man, how's it going on? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Why? And I know he probably like. Why that nigga acting like exactly? That? <laughs> you understand? So it's it's having that restraint because I wanted to say I do more. Me you and you both. I done seen it. So yeah. When you done been put in those situations where people railroaded you or try to do you injustice, and you know they was wrong, it's hard to even be in the same space with them. Man. You lied on my partner, and you tried to down me. Yeah. So ain't there's nothing to talk nothing about. Nothing to talk about. Yeah. We could never be friends or Period. never even. I don't even talk to you. Know, I don't even see you dead to me. And that's the way you be thinking, man. I I got to move on with life. But my question is because I know earlier you said that the prosecutor could um could could go could um take another job. Mm -hmm. You know, in that case like that. But politics is politics, like. Mm -hmm. Couldn't some prosecutors also be fearful for their lives because of the police and stuff like that? How does that play a part? Technically, yes. Down there, nah. Okay. They ain't rocking like that. You understand okay. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to tell you the difference because, so when I got to law school, I lived in California. I lived in LA for two years. Okay. I did, um, I was a sports agent. I worked for, did sports entertainment law before I came back to Texas or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I came back to Texas and my mom got sick. She had a heart attack. So um, she was recovering or whatever. She pulled me to the side and it was like, she ain't never asked me this in my life. She's like, uh, you think you can move back closer to home? Yeah. You'd be like, what what's wrong? Say? What happened? I'm coming right. home. It's like, I guess so. Like, it's, it's understood. Because she, she's always, if the opportunity is there, she know they was going. Pew, whatever it is. So uh, when I came back, so now I got to sit for the Texas bar exam, right? In fact, they did California. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So boom. And so um, everybody I know, like I was saying, is getting in, trouble. getting in trouble or related to somebody that I grew up with. So it just kind of fell in, you know, because I'm like, dang, okay. So now where do you get the best training to fight the people? Is You have to learn how they, work. how they work. So almost like on some spook this out by the door type time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... I go, but luckily enough for me, I was I came up here. I didn't I didn't practice down there as a prosecutor. I came up here, and it was it was hard because it's the like the, I'm at that time like they the police. Yeah. With the police, I'm nah, no, bump that. I'll figure something else out. And then my uncle and one of my OG partners put me to the side and gave me the game. It's like listen, we understand what you're saying, but you also have the power. To cut that bull crap out as well. That's right. Because mm -hmm. you have a power to dismiss cases and blah, blah, blah. Go learn the game. So then you equip yourself with that knowledge so then when you go out and defend, you're ready. And it was like a pill 
that you I had to swallow. I ain't like it. Yeah. Just because of how my, you know what I'm saying? I was raised like, nah, we don't do that. So luckily enough for me, Craig Watkins at the time is like the first bl- black district attorney in the state of Texas. So it's history going on. But the difference is, is this, like this is how, this is the latitude that Craig had gave us as prosecutors. You read the police report, right? And you sit there and you say, I look like that was driving while black or driving while Hispanic or whatever, right? So you dismiss that case. You write up why, and that's what it is. You're not having to go all the way up and ask such and such and such. So that's what justice is. You know, like you 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 have to be affirmative and, and seek out justice as a prosecutor. And sometimes justice is telling the police, this is how this works. Yeah, There's a such thing as the Constitution, Jack. Let me sit down with you and show you how this goes. So every time I get one of your police reports that looks like this, it's, it's gone. We dismissing wow. this case or whatever. That's the latitude we had in Dallas. Now, that's probably one in, that's not how it works. That ain't how it works. Mm-hmm. Typically it's, dang, this is messed up, but let me see how I can cover for the police yeah. to work. You see what I'm saying? And so what ends up happening, a lot of people who are indigent end up having to have court-appointed representation, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And court-appointed attorneys get a bad reputation, but all of them not. Bad. It's just the, the problem is once you find out your lawyer bad, it's probably it's too late. Too late. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So what happens is, let's say for instance, um, you was pulled over for an illegal reason. There was no reason for you to get pulled over. You have a prosecutor that is gonna. Some prosecutors that'll say, "Let me call officer such and such and see what we can cook up to make to cook see what's going on." Because you, at that particular time, and I don't even think now, web dash cams and body cams weren't mandatory right you would have it or you didn't have it mm-hmm. or you could have it and say it's malfunctioning and we lost the footage and all that type right. of stuff right okay bam so you, let me talk call officer such and such and get this right and then they proceed but then you could have another prosecutor that's like oh no 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 this is wrong that ain't how we do things i'm not going to wait on this defense attorney to file a motion to suppress because he might not be that savvy yeah but at the same time this man's freedom was jeopardized and it was illegal. So I'm gonna be proactive. It's not gonna matter who his attorney is. I know this was wrong. We're gonna dismiss this case. I'm gonna call this officer in and we're gonna have a conversation and hopefully it won't happen again. Wow. But, yeah, but typically that's not what it it's is. It's so many different guys that Craig Watkins got uh, released back then. I remember the book. I got a book at the house that, remember Kelly, the, the guy she was with, I got that book. Mm-hmm. It had a lot of people in there that had been wrong, wrongfully right. uh, uh, um, prosecuted and just, man, how often does this happen? And, and is it getting better? Or can, will it ever get better? No, nah, and I'm going to tell you just my own Honest opinion. Honest opinion. The, the problem I see is that, okay, when this whole legal process starts, the, the police – are typically responding to something. They right. some rarely they witness something while it's happening. Somebody's called them. You know what I'm saying. So they that's where they go. Then they pass it off. They hand the baton to the prosecutor's office to the intake. Right. Yeah. So at the end of the day, and then that prosecutor he decides or she decides whether to we're going to indict this and take it to the grand jury to try to get an indictment, or we're going to shoot it back and say there's not enough evidence, et cetera, et cetera. Some of them rubber stamp everything that comes through. You understand what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't know, you also have a right to be heard at grand jury. Nobody ever goes there. You see what I'm saying? So the season, it's been many times where I've got cases dismissed at the grand jury level because we put together what is called a grand jury packet because if the grand jury is not hearing your side of the story, all they have to go by is the other side. Report. That's right. You see what I'm police saying? report. So boom, you can get in front of it a lot of the times. So with that being said, it's like it's two y'all are two different entities. I had to tell a prosecutor that you're not the police. It's okay. They get it wrong. They're human. Stop covering for them. Yeah. Because how are they going to learn and get better if you rubber stamping everything they bringing in here? It's almost a stigma as if the police officers are not that smart. Yep. I'm being honest with you. That, when you look at social media and when you look at all these different things that are happening in society today, a lot of the officers seem that they did not get educated on law. Yeah. Why is that? Probably a few things. I think it's a shortage. But am, of, I, am I thinking correctly? Yeah, no, you're, you're right. It's a shortage of of law enforcement. Period. Right. Qualified law enforcement. 
But they say we still have to have these streets patrolled, et cetera, et cetera. So they're hurrying up and getting them qualified and putting them out there. Right. So it's like any other job. If me and you go into a restaurant and we have a bad waitress, we just don't tip them and we don't come back. But people going to jail when when it's a an bad unseasoned police. Pro, uh, police officer that's not known. And it's a whole different ball game. It's serious. And the thing is, I know how it feels when them steel doors close. You understand? It's yeah. cold and they bringing them bologna sandwich and them apples and them oranges that book I know but I don't the average law enforcement they've never been in them shoes so it's like well we'll arrest them and the prosecutor can figure it out but that's an experience even if you're going into a holding tank yeah it's for a horrible. couple hours you know what I'm saying yeah it's very very bad but very. then I would think because you know like I just I watch movies I watch a lot of, and I, I know that a lot of these things that happen in movies especially with stuff like that is concerned it is reality mm -hmm. And so how true are the cases where like when you have a bad police officer and you have other people above them, they tend to um, try to help that person like cover it up. Because, That's the blue code, ain't it? Yeah, because, because I, is, okay, this is the reason why I'm thinking because. It's not the fact that, okay, I know you're wrong, so I'm going to get you in trouble, you know, whatever. But they know that if this person get in trouble, it's going to open a them. whole bunch of, Work other cases and other cases and they don't want to have to go through that because they're gonna now start looking into the department and a whole bunch they just don't want to have to deal with all of that so let me just go ahead and cover you up even if i have to fire you for stealing hours right. you know that's lesser than all the crap that i could you know what i mean that's facts and it's funny you said that because i was just having a conversation with my partner about something almost similar and mm -hmm. that is this when for instance because this is what you hear this is what i hear well, all police officers ain't bad and blah, blah, blah. I agree. All people ain't bad. All people ain't good, regardless mm -hmm. of what they do for a living. I right. get that, right? But here's the deal. Here's the difference. And, and I had this conversation with a police officer. If you are riding in the car with your partner and you see him do something that you know is wrong, are you going to go tell him? Most time they're not, bro. 99.9% .9 of the time, you not. It depends on seniority. If the person who saw him person who did it is more of a rookie than the person who saw him, then he has authority to say, hey, da 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 But if the person who saw it is more green than the person who actually did it, then he not going to say nothing. No, nah, everybody not like on training day. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can say No, it. no, no that's saying, what I'm saying yeah, exactly what yeah. you just said. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 that's a movie. You know, most of the time these guys are in cahoots with each other and people's lives are being thrown around like it's nothing. That's that's my issue. So they don't what they, they don't snitch on each other when they know something is wrong, right? But here's the deal. What's the first thing they try to get you to do? Snitch. Snitch. <laughs> that's what they do, man. So what's the craziest case that you can think of that you um and I know you can't talk about everything, but mm -hmm. just something that, that, that sticks out you. to you that affected you outside of your friend. Because that's that a you whole cry. pill to swallow what you told us. Yeah. Okay. So the it made you cry. That made you cry. Why women always want somebody to cry? Saying. You don't want them. They made you cry. You're a man. Yes. But still, there, it, being in the, in the career that you're in, I know you've seen some stuff that just like whether you had to just walk away and go into a room by yourself or whatever because yeah. it was that... Well, Touching, I, I hate horrifying. just as a competitor, I hate to lose anything. That's you, it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's probably the hardest. Still, toughest you bit. never get used to that. What? Is is you know what I mean? Like, it's, but here's the deal, though. Yeah, I know what cases to try, what, what cases not to try. Yeah. Right. But it's not up to me. So if I'm telling you don't my get client, to pick and choose. Listen, fam, I'm gonna be 100 with you. You, you gotta go sit down, bro. You're not gonna it, beat this. It's, it's just a matter of time. No nah, man, I'm, nah, they're gonna have to earn that. They're out of Ooh. touch with reality. Okay, I'm gonna put on this suit. I'm gonna spray this bond number nine. We're gonna put on the show, man. But we going down. It is what it is. So, man, it is what it is. I don't bother going to that pen to turn. But I ain't not gonna let these folks. Woo, woo, woo. They gonna have to earn this. Now, here's the problem. You've been to TDC twice already, right? In which we know your third case, they can put that habitual on you, twenty five to life. Nothing you can do. Either the prosecutor can put it on there. Or they can take it off, but there's I can't even I can't argue it to the judge why you some if you got the two prize, you, you that's what it is, right? So now our zero is twenty five, so the minimum is twenty five. Trying to explain it to listen, I'm not saying it's fair. I'm just telling you it's reality. They offering fifteen, fam. You better take it. 
It's non ag. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm gonna go down there and listen to number and blah like this. Man, listen, I understand, but it's up to you. Cause I'm going home regardless afterwards. But I'm just telling you. Bumping, we so we gonna rock with it. We gonna try it. Okay, cool. Boom. So boom. We try the case. You know, they go deliberate. So now it's like in the defense attorney community, like if a if a jury deliberates and they out four or five hours, it's like you got a moral victory. Cause you know what I'm saying? Normally a lot of times they troop, they come right back guilty, bam. But moral victories at the end of the day, that that's you still going to jail because you came in second place. Boom. Yeah. So now that you know they go to jail and I'm like, why? To that for that for that long or whatever. It's like dang. So but Talk about the feds, and you 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 may know this, but the lay normal lay person is not gonna know this. Have you ever heard of something called misprison of a felony? No. Misprison of a okay. felony. Okay, when you get a chance, when I leave, Google it. Misprison of a felony. This is real live talk. It's gonna mess you up. Check this out. I had a person come to my office one time. Of course, I can't name names, whatever. And it, this individual worked at a clinic, right? I mean, this was back when them, them doctors was writing scripts for everything, out the door, it's people lined up outside, they lit getting it out the door, right? But my client is green, this is his first job out of the clinic, and all he had to do, his job description was, when people come in, you hand them a clipboard, they fill out the information, you put the information, you file it in this cabinet, and that's it, cool. Never worked out of the clinic before, it's not a doctor, you understand what I'm saying? So that's what he did. So, it being a line outside, he has nothing to compare it to. So to him, that's the norm. Like, it's nothing suspicious about that. Boom. So long story short, feds come in. Arrest the doctor, you know, go through the staff. They take him. They arrest my guy. Okay, bam. Charge him with what I just told y'all about, right? Mm -hmm. and this is what it is. If you witness a felony, you don't report it. It's Miss Prison. A felony. Wow, and you don't even know it's happening. So Boom. No criminal history. How much time you can get for that? It, we just the fair system is it, different because they work off point systems. Miss right? prison over yeah. felony. So, in sentencing in the feds, like if you have criminal history or whatever, it, so you it earns points, mm -hmm. and then that th those points will put you in a certain range of punishment, right? And then there's a certain things that can reduce points or whatever. So it just kind of depends or whatnot. So they hit him with this. The man got a child. Never been to prison before. He doesn't have anything going on with what the doctor got going. He's making twelve dollars an hour, so he doesn't get no kickbacks from the pharmaceutical. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Right. He's just doing what he's told. Shoot, I'd be like, I don't want none of my record. Just take it off. So then they say, okay, well, we'll give you like some crazy number, eleven months. When the feds offer you eleven months, that means that you know it ain't nothing for real. It ain't nothing for real. Mm -hmm. But why they, you know what I'm saying? Y'all got the doctor. He, he goes to trial. But they want you to take something. So how am, I, how am I supposed to know I'm supposed to report something that I don't know is wrong? Right. You understand what I'm saying? So for everybody out there. Well, you, you he had to do it. He had to go for Lemma. Well, yeah. no, he could have fought it. I was like, man, listen, this is bogus. Because let's go before the jury. Because we have, we're talking about 12 people who don't really likely not going to practice law. So we can put them in your shoes. And if, if I don't believe they'll be convinced beyond a reasonable doubt. That's it. You see what I'm saying? But, but then you had a, oh man, they got a 99%, 98% conviction, right? That's because everybody pleased, bro. That's right. That's why. So you end up, did he end up going before? We had to. Had to. And, 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 and that is an open and close for a, a you win case to me. Right. Right. You know what I mean? And, and But look at how much you have to go through. And for you see for so nothing, many, like yeah. like for nothing, for just for for nothing. And you see so many cases where people are jewed into accepting those plea bargains when you know that they're trumped up stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. They could have gotten off if they had hey, a good man. lawyer. You've seen a bunch of that. Man, listen, this is this is where you. I get a lot. Have of you it. ever seen something that just say, "Man, just let me take some, man. I'm gonna go and get that." And you know, like, man, we could probably beat this. I'm pleading, don't do it. I'm gonna give you an example. And you get it a lot with these assault family violence. It's, look, if if you if someone p p calls the police and tries to put you in jail because they mad because they because they caught you cheating, yeah, right? mm -hmm. you ain't put your hands on them, fam. You gotta you can't talk to her no more. Uh -uh. It just is what it is. 
I ain't saying it's not going to be hard and all that, but you got put in jail, even if it's a misdemeanor. 99.9% .9 of the time, they go right back in the same Straight relationship. Back. Quickly. And they they won't leave. It's like they have, and they know that all that's going to happen is that they're going to end up right back in jail or worse. And little mama, she presses me. I don't understand. I'm looking at, you called the police. Not me. You the reason why he in jail. I've seen so many and he, times. And he, and he on parole. So they're going to set that parole hold on him. So now we got to sit this out. So a prime example. I had a client of mine. He's actually one of my partners. Um, his old his daughter. He caught his old daughter in his house doing grown stuff. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Hey. Da -da 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 -da. Right. So she ain't beat up nothing like that. But he grabbed her. And he's yeah. strong because he's been in TDC. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So she had like some Bruises. Bruise marks on her arms. Mm -hmm. Call the police, blah, 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 blah. But he's on parole. He never messed up. Been on parole like three years. Clean it straight as a whistle, right? Working, whole nine. But at the same time, you want you want him to be a father to his kids. Well, that discipline is what comes with it as well. You understand what I'm saying now? Mm -hmm. So they take him to jail on a misdemeanor. The bond's out. Then they, then they come back. They put the blue one on him, right? My man... Got rent to pay, bills to pay, car note, et cetera, et cetera. He's in jail basically for being a father to his daughter. Now, mind you, daughter and I already wrote a statement saying, I did this, I, you know, he didn't he didn't beat me up or anything like that, blase, blase. Prosecutor. Well, 12 years ago, he went to jail for assault. They were not going to dismiss it. That's always on your right? record. So now... And, and here's the challenges of being, not just being an attorney, but just being a man. Because there's like this, this morality thing that's inside all of us. So now I'm looking at a dude that ain't did nothing wrong in my eyes, right? He about to lose his apartment, his car note. Uh, so what I do, fan don't trip. You're not going to lose your apartment while I'm on this case. You're going to keep what, paying what is for it. it? Yeah. It's just don't trip. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fan was in there like two or three months, four months. You know what I'm saying? But he came out solid. So anyways, I'm telling him, I can beat this case, bro. But he can't bond out because he got the blue one. Correct. Whatever. What's that? Uh, so blue one, I mean, they take it, they take it, they take away the, you can't get released because you on parole. So you okay. you yeah. got a blue one. That means you stuck until you get that situation that you're in there for taking care of. Or if they parole, if they decide to right. re, you know, reinstate you. Right. And typically, if it's a, a lot of times, if it's like a theft case or misdemeanor level, or maybe possession of marijuana parole will, will let you out. But if there's anything that got a solid attached to it, they you gonna you see out. it or whatever. They don't, they don't even care about the particulars of it. You know what I'm saying, what's going on. So he's in there, time passing, and I'm going back and forth with this prosecutor, and she she's holding stiff, and I'm like, but she knows that this is during COVID. She playing games. So you know ain't no trials about to happen. Bro, that's the thing, man. How much do... Racism play, because when I w dealing with the situations that I've dealt with in the past, I always felt out of place inside of any any judicial place. Period. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, it mm -hmm. just didn't seem like a black person belonged in there. Man, mm -hmm. I may be tripping, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it seemed real. It didn't seem like it was for us. And maybe I need to go to Georgia or somewhere. Where they happen up in the black set? Mississippi. Mississippi, yeah, Jackson. Yeah. I, I bet they got, but I bet you they ain't got us in there. I really yeah. don't think so. I think everywhere you go is an issue like that. No, it, see. I don't know. I hadn't been everywhere. You ain't far off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be real. But it, it's even something deeper. I'm not, I wouldn't sit there and say all of them racist. But there is a, um, a disconnect between typically typically this is how young prosecutors make it to being prosecutors they go to high school they go to college they go to law school and they apply to be a prosecutor they ain't got no outside work experience or real life experiences prior to being this assistant prosecutor right so takes from someone who's never been around us mm -hmm. right I'm saying they racist they ain't, they ain't just been around let me just stop you a little bit same go thing back. with a lot of police officers when you go back the people that's going to here and going to there and being ended up in these job positions, they mothers, they fathers, they daddies, all of them have been in these circles. This is a strong knit circle yeah. where these people only letting the people in. This is a 
good old boy type system that's going on. I'm telling you. I know. So therefore, when you go into it as a person from the outside mm-hmm. who never dealt with them, mm-hmm. they're not going to rock with you like that. It's I'm just common sense to me. Prime example. When Craig, and that's what was so fascinating about Craig. When you went, walk into that courtroom in Dallas, you probably was going to have at least one, if not two, some non, like minority prosecutors in that workroom, whether it be black, whether it be Hispanic, whether it be Asian. Really, he, he was and pushed. likely in Dallas for sure, you're probably going to have a female black judge. Yeah, but, right in Dallas. but that's that's not, he been out of office now for a while. Right. And now you got, okay, so. So did that, ha- did, with him going through, it had to change the the way things were being done, but did it hold true to it or did it just revert to, to back today. to what it what right. it was before? So now we have uh, Judge Cruzo. Well, he ain't a judge anymore, but he was when I was practicing as a prosecutor. He was a Judge Cruzo. Um, but then, you know, we had that little stint where uh, Susan Hawk was yeah. the DA. And for the most part, I didn't see a, a large seismic shift in new prosecutors at one time. I didn't. You know, like policy may have changed here and there, but yeah. as far as it, now, it wasn't as dark when, when Craig was there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the same time, it, it was it was okay. It was okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, now I don't know her because I didn't work for her, whatever what the philosophy was, and then like a lot of the people who was there, I trained. You understand? And and so it is another thing. A lot of times, it's, it's relationships that get stuff done. Yeah, definitely relationships. What happened with? Remember that po- that guy that killed the police officer downtown? He shot a lot of police officers. They downed him with that. Then he, they downed him with the robot, and then the other guy quit after that. The chief said, "I'm out of here." Mm-hmm. I don't. I didn't really know the ins and outs, but I knew there had to be a difficult situation going mm-hmm. on. It's more toxic, or it's more intense than what we even would mm-hmm. know being on the outside looking in. Mm-hmm. Um, what? How hard is it? when you dealing with them type of situations, man, cause it, Dallas seemed like they, Dallas had a lot. You gotta go back all the way to the president getting killed and all kinds of stuff. Dallas Facts. has had a lot of stuff to go down in crime world in history, man. Facts. I'm being real. Facts. So how, I mean, so there's a lot of things that happen. I even, I even think of what's the name? John Wiley Price, he won mm-hmm. his case. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. I'd be like, yeah, like we got strong. one. <laughs> like, like it was, but it was one that didn't win. It was another guy. Sure was. I don't forgot his name. It was a brother. I kept seeing him on news. They gave him some time. I was mean. it like care? Like some? Yeah. Yeah, that's him. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> so man, I mean, and then you being in the uh, uh, midst of being an attorney. Let me get to a question. Like, how uh, you do you feel like that we have somewhat of a voice in in uh, as as minorities in the Dallas area? More so than other places, for sure. That, that's what I would think yeah. too. That that's a good thing. You gotta take what you can get in this thing, right, man. Right. So, um, do you? How long will you? You defense attorney, now? correct? Um, is that how's that going for you? Oh, that's great. You like great. that better? Yeah, for sure. And, and and it was by design. I knew once I got X amount of trials, I was gone. That was yeah. already what it was when I went in there, whatever. Yeah. So and then it, you know, I had that whole situation where when I first came in, just prior, I don't talk to police. I don't. And, um, you know, being the prosecutor, I was in my workroom and they come in and like, hey, what's going on? And like, I, I, I wouldn't say nothing. Just like, not doing it on purpose, this is how I was wired at the time. And then um, one of my coworkers was like, hey man, let me talk to you. Like, what's going on? He's like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, what's happening? I just noticed that, you know, law enforcement coming, you just know. And I was like, do I, re-? yeah, you're probably right. You've been through a saying? lot, though, David. Yeah, you yeah. Gotta, come on, man. You've been through some stuff, man. Yeah. You, I could see how I, I can't see how you made it this far dealing with this stuff, but I can at, at the same time because it's a passion inside now right. to make people do the right thing. Real talk. Just like my son-in-law, he uh, police officer. I remember in New York, I was like, man, why would you want to be a? He's like, I want to be a part of the solution, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's doing it now. And we get we he and Colleen, but we get those. Oh, okay. We get those conversations. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. get to talk about different things. Okay. As a, as a he down there doing his thing, but here, um, it's yours anyway. I've <laughs> <laughs> been yours for 20 years. Already. But, but no, man, just, um, man, it's a f- breath of fresh air for you to even come on this show. No, I appreciate um, you're the first attorney that we've had on this show. Um, we are going to Houston to uh, interview another one 
No, really, it's crazy. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come to in twos, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I just, you know, I, I commend you, brother, for being able to stay in the game like this. So how many years have you been officially practicing law? Um, solo practitioner nine. since well since oh nine officially, but as a defense attorney since twelve. Is it okay to talk when the police stop you or when they taking you to jail? Yeah. You says, but they say you are, what did it say? You had a right, right to remain silent. Like, don't tell on yourself. You understand what I'm saying? But stand I mean, your ground stand, when it comes to the law. That's right. Stand but your well, ground. I, that could get dangerous, though. What if you don't really Thanks. know it, though? It's, it's, it's like You this. know it. So it's cool for you to do it, David. But a person who, like, ignorant and jumping out, right. talking about, uh, uh, what, 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 do you suspect me of a crime and all that? These niggas on the right. internet is funny to me. Yeah, Google uh, what, what, crime, what crime do you suspect me of? <laughs> yeah. I got my phone. Uh, you know, what, it don't come on, my nigga. Uh, yeah. right. And some yeah. of it, I'll be like, nigga, you wrong. Like, that. That's right. That's right. You got to pick and choose your battles, man. <laughs> so everybody will try to do like you. I remember I seen it on Tyler Perry movie where they got stopped and he was playing an attorney. Mm -hmm. And he was in the truck and, 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 and he was playing himself in three different ways like mm -hmm. he always do. And it was like crazy, but it was so true. You know what I mean? How they was handling them. Um, it's just nerve wracking that our people get challenged like this by the law. Right. And, and, and it's happening still. I don't think it's went away. No, 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 no. No. It's, it, and it, 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 it's that type of thing is, is in, I feel as though it's just ingrained in U, U.S. society, man. It is what it is. We like, we how long we've been having issues with the police, man, for a long time, bro. For a long, long time, man. So, what happened with these? Let's get into the hip hoppers for a second because okay. I don't want to hold you forever. No, no problem. I want to talk about these hip hoppers for a minute, man, Tell because they on the Instagram. Ah, da, 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 da. Some of it's props, some of them real. And what is that? I mean, is this something they should be doing or should they stop and put the damn guns up and the money up and quit doing it? Crash test dummy. Really? But will listen. they convict you for something you said in a rap song? I Booster said they will. They'll use it. They'll use it as punishment evidence and use it to try to paint you out of out as something that you not necessarily is. So I've, I've seen it. That's in the when you've been found guilty in a trial phase. They bringing all that out. What is that YouTube stuff coming? Instagram that's coming. I've had a case where it was all social media. All the evidence was Instagram, Facebook posts, facts. Did you beat it or would, could you get around them blows? I ain't beat it because they had too probation. much information. But didn't yeah, it? but but I, I, look, every Daner probably every defense attorney had told his client, "Listen, man." Don't be on Instagram they love with it. guns and money. They love it. The, it's people who work for the police. They Eight-hour job is monitoring social media. They sit at a desk. Their job is to monitor Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. That's what they do. Man, I'm telling you right now, man. That, that boy, is, boy, they put that song on, man, and, and, and then, you know, somebody get something done to them, they'll make it that, too. Facts. Because they, they don't have to say a name. They be like, that's who he was talking about right there. As long as they got you to say it, they can kind of tap into it. Yeah. Man, look, and I, ain't a damn thing you can do about it. I had a case where a prosecutor, like, he, I went in there to talk to him about the case, right? My guy was um, got caught with some green, whatever. I go in there. He said, hey, man, yeah, I see where your guy is a rapper. So I'm like, huh? Who would he rap for? Real? He does? <laughs> What's his, you know? Oh, yeah, let, let me pull it up. He pull it up. Man, my dude. He, yeah. And what, he, 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 he had it on there. He had the weed on there. He had all that on there. He going in. Whatever. Oh, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm like. But you know how I'm gonna throw him a curveball. I can't go down like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We talking about these Instagram, uh, uh, the one to get on these with the guns and with. Oh, that's so no, no. But they they, <laughs> they got to go to trial. They got to go to court too. With the guns and the weed and all of that on social media, you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we. I into. can never understand why people do that because they know that that's all evidence that you know police and lawyers and whatever use against them. Like right. why? It's like, if you're not doing it, you're not popular, but then if a case ever builds up and they don't realize that just because somebody not snatching them right away as soon as they put it up, mm -hmm. they're building cases. They're holding all of that information, taking it off and holding it in your file and be like, okay, yeah, just wait. And just wait. Pooh Shiesty. Pooh Shiesty went through it. Yeah. Pooh Shiesty went through a crazy thing, you know what I mean, where uh, he was, uh, yeah, held for something that he so-called done. So. Yeah. They you know, just don't realize that, you know, they think it's just, it has to happen right now. 
and they, I've heard people say that, like, man, they brought up something that happened like five years ago, and da da da. Yeah. Like, yeah, they've been building a case against you, right? Duh. Well, see, is the hip hop police for real? Absolutely. A lot of ways. Oh, they have well. police ex well, well, Explain to me what that would be. It, but we like the community and the culture is the reason why. Because mm-hmm. okay, for instance, when the last time you ever heard uh, Guns and Roses shoot shooting at Metallica? You don't hear it. Mm-mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Since when uh, is uh, Britney Spears put out a hit on uh, Pink or Christina Aguilera because they over some right? That's the stuff we bring. Mm-hmm. You, you understand when you bring the BS, you are gonna get BS back. They bring it to be different, but it's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I'm, I'm just telling you because they just like to be different from everybody else. And yes, it comes with a lot more controversy because I've heard I've heard a lot of people say, "Well, you know what? I just like to show out. That's that's just who I am." Mm-hmm. But I guess it comes with the culture. They said that our culture stands out. And, and this is hip hop culture impacts everybody from the bottom of the barrel to the top of the barrel. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What's going on right now? And that's why things are going to be monitored, right? Because what ends up happening, you have young people influencing other young people, right? Whether good or bad. Mm -hmm. So this is what's happening right now. Listen to me. If you're dealing with that fentanyl, you you they gonna bury you. I'm just telling you. Yeah. So when you up in there rapping talking about this, this, this and this and if your tail get caught, you done. People are dying. Mm -hmm. Suburban America is dying. And those lyrics because people because rappers tend to try to Rap what they live, not all. And some of them be faking and shaking, but a lot of them do. Right. And because of that, they don't realize the lyrics can also be evidence as it's, well. And if it's not, they're gonna try to make it into yeah. evidence or whatever. Because of how they perceive it. But but see, here's the flip side of that coin as far as when it comes to rappers. Mm-hmm. Now, the, I ain't talking about youngsters that's just on social media with guns and they ain't rap nothing, mm-hmm. right? But I'm saying so. The market, if the market demands or is responding to a certain image, right? I mean, you a youngster trying to get you some money in, in this rap stuff, right? And you looking at the blueprint that's before you, right? Um, and everybody else is this what they're doing? Whether you really want to do that or not, mm-hmm. but if this is what's going to get you on and get you and your family out get of a situation, mm-hmm. you're gonna do it too. You're gonna take the risk. Mm-hmm. That's it. So, but I, well, I, one more question. Go ahead. Um, because you're a defense attorney, have you ever taken on anyone that eventually you're like you're scared of for your life? No, and I I, I probably I should have been probably, but I I'm too crazy not I don't be barring that man. Because when I think about you know, I had that. been through a lot. I had that question in my mind, but when I had that question in my mind, after I thought about it, I started thinking about what he been through. Not not only that, wasn't there the attorney who got killed in Kaufman or the judge oh, yeah. and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, but that was internal because of something they had going. Uh, another on. judge smoked them. Yeah, right. they was together. they was all <laughs> in that together. Yeah, so. That was all they thing. Yeah. I know they but. tried to make it our thing, but it didn't work. No. It, at first they did. Yeah. I know. I'm like, what? That ain't what somehow we'll do it. You know, right. that ain't. You kind of knew. Like, that ain't something. That ain't something <laughs> yeah. we do. You know what I'm saying? We, we have, but we ain't like that. We are. We Not are. that bold. No, no. We coming a little different than that. So, some of my most loyal clients is, um, was Aryan Brotherhood cat. Really? I'm telling you. Wow. And, and, and so how it, how it went down, um, because I, like, so. When I first started, uh, I did court appointments, right? So you don't get to choose those. You, right. get, you get an email, right. has right. a name, right. boom. So this dude name, which I can't say, mm-hmm. but it was, I thought he was black just by his name, mm-hmm. right? I'm gonna say that. So boom, I roll up in there. Hey, I'm here to see such and such. Go out goes and gets him. Dude come around the corner, he uh-huh. skin head, uh-huh. lightning bolts, everything tattooed on his, like some off a of gangland. Real talk. So I'm like, okay. So you know it is what it right. is. So he talking to the glass. So he coming, I say, man, listen, I'm gonna go on cut to the chase. I'm gonna be, I look, clearly I'm black. I'm gonna be black. If you got an issue with me representing you, we can go on kill it now or whatever. So it is what, what is it is. That? No, Mr. Hudson, it's cool, it's cool. I just look like that because I gotta survive in prison. I've been in prison yeah. and it's segregated. 
Like I ain't. You got it. You got to click up with some. Yeah. So I'm like, wow. okay. I'm like, you for sure. That's so true. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't want no problems. Nah, we good. Blah blah blah. Man, this dude ended up being one of my best one thousand. Because then you do them right, they recommend you to somebody else and somebody else because they know a lot of people who have about seven, eight, eight million on the road, bro. Right, who need people. (laughs) So so do you do you okay, where do you listen to hip hop? Music. Oh, yes, I was raised on that. What's your top three artists of all time? I got to get it from mm. him, man. I got to get it. Mr. Hudson got to give it to him. And top three lawyers of all time. Top three. Top three. We want to do lawyers or, 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 or hip hop first? Hip hop first. Hip hop first. We'll do, we'll do lawyers next. Mm-hmm. Hip hop first. Number one. Tupac. That's my nigga. You on the wall right mm-hmm. there. You oh, on the right. other side. Yes, sir. Number Tupac. two. Scarface. Scott. That nigga bad, too. I and don't number know. three. Number three. That's where it get hard. Everybody say <laughs> this. Number Everybody three. say that. That's where it gets hard. Number man. three. You gotta Ooh. give him my three. Whew. Nigga, if you don't say what I want you to say, I'm gonna kick you out of my stove. You know what I'm talking about? I know what you want to say. This is this what I'm gonna say, just because it, and it's, it could be a 10 way tie. I ain't, uh, I'm about to try to one, one person. name. Don't try can to play. Group? No, yeah, yeah, it can. Yeah, it can be a group. Then I'm gonna have to ride with UGK. Hey, that nigga get to stay in the I knew it, but that nigga get kicked out of the Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. now we go go with Hold attorneys. On. But before you get into attorney, have you ever seen a case or heard a case like on the news something happened, whatever, and it was so touching to you that you want like, to go represent that person? I'm going to do this pro bono. You don't have to pay me nothing. Sure. I'm going to take this because I believe in you. Absolutely, um, a lot of times actually. But it, you have to be careful because. Like we got these ethical rules that we go by as attorneys. Yeah. So I just can't pull up to the, the, the uh, jail and say, "Hey, you need a lawyer." Woo. No, oh, you, he got you know a hire. So, but you can put, you know, the put it in there. You can put it in there. Hey, tell old boy, old mama, holler at me. That's, oh, okay. They, that's the bullcrap. How they doing? Them, yeah. Them. You know, that's, what I'm that's so there. crazy. You can't just go up to them and no, be you like, can't. no, because that person's choice to say, "No, nah, I don't want you," or "Yeah, I want you," or you know, because if you gonna go out of your way to Man, be like, it, "I can," being from L.A., you said being being that you've been in L.A. in law when uh, my boy Nipsey got. Kill man, cause I I knew Nipsey. I, I met him, met, went to his family. She know mm-hmm. I was my wife. No, this nigga that did it, it, an attorney popped up that we ain't seen since the OJ trial. That tripped me out, bro. Mm-hmm. And then I got action the interviewing. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what yeah. I'm gonna say to this nigga? Like, yeah. why you do it? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Man, it's crazy, man. How things be happening? You just don't know how that end up happening. I wanted to say that because. How does this happen? How do you end up even getting a call for something like this? You, it, yeah. It's just weird to me. Or he right. might decide and be like, "I'm going to do." I'm going I don't to know. Him. Yeah. You think so? That you nigga weird know. to do that. It's a high profile that's a weird, trial. That's, too. Weird. that's a high profile. It's out there, so they they want to be seen again. Facts, but you gotta be careful though, because regardless if you're getting paid a million dollars or zero, if you fumble the rock, it's the hey. You, so, it is what it is. He got out of that quick as soon as it happened, though. Yeah, check those blues out. But anyway, give me the top three attorneys of, <laughs> attorneys of, all, of all time. Got to be number one, Johnny. Mm-hmm, I Johnny Cochran. Now, that is definitely number one. Number Johnny. two. Mr. Jamel down in H-Town. Mr. Jamel, I, I heard that boy bad, too. Why? What's, right. what, what's, the, what's the thing that that person have ever done that you just like, okay, that made him... Johnny Cochran? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Jamel. We I know Johnny okay. Cochran, but Jamel. When, I don't you, ta- know that when you take on Titans, oil companies and stuff like that, as a solo practitioner, we ain't talking about somebody who came from a firm that got 50 attorneys to work solo with. Solo practice. Mm-hmm. He came in and, and, let, and went in. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, and prevailed. So that's, that's tough. Gotcha. Number that's three. Mm. You know what? That's tough too. That third one. That third one always, one always you know tough. I mean? Number three. I tell you what, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna get some local love or whatever, and I may be biased because I, it's gonna be a two way tie. Three, it's no. a two way tie. Y'all gotta no. get me. Nope. No. Number one. I'm, I'm gonna say uh, Michael Todd. Okay, Michael okay. Todd. Yeah. And man. why? Because I, I, I fooled with him number one, mm-hmm. and and he's taught me a lot, but. He's sharp, he know his stuff, and he know how to play the game. He a chess master. <laughs> <laughs> he gotta be a chess master. Yeah. Man, say man, we love you, David, man. It, it, this is dope, man. 
Thank you. Shout out to Mr. Lee. Shout out to Mr. Lee. We love you. You know you, my guy, man. Um, Man, it's just it's just dope to have you on the platform. I appreciate you, Mr. Hudson. Go ahead. Most lawyers always, not all, but a lot of them move from being a lawyer to a judge. Do you have any aspirations? That's a good question. Nah, I don't. um, They tried to put that key in my back one time. Way go. Hey, man, you think you want it? Nah. At the time, like, it ain't trying to be like, nah, I'm good. But number one, I know too many people. Mm. Number one, down there. So, and number two, at the, like, it's not, an, it wasn't enough luchas at the time. Let me just you know say this. Man? Shout out to my boy, uh, my, my boy, uh, Wes, hot boy Wes. Shout out to Waco that's Tron. My, that's my partner. Shout out to them boys, yeah. man. They've been on Boss mm-hmm. Talk, man. Yeah. We got another a Waco affiliate in the building. Y'all need this nigga. Y'all need to call it. <laughs> yeah, <for real. laughs> Say, man, thank you for coming on Boss Talk 101. No what a boss's talk, mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, we love you, and we're going to always call you if we got questions. Anytime. And, and we're going to have you to come back in when big cases happen. We, gonna, we got our guy now. For sure. And we thank God for it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss's talk. And we have.